Yeah, I often wondered, you know, if, if I'd chewed all five sticks of gum before I got to Berlin, it would never have happened. It's been over 50 years since Utah native and current Propo resident Gail Halverson shared two sticks of gum with a group of German children. That small act of kindness during the Berlin airlift was a defining moment in Halverson's life. Those two sticks of gum turned into 23 tons of candy as Halverson, better known as the Candy Bomber, inspired others to join in to give a sliver of hope to the beleaguered German people. I've been blessed all through my life uh, uh, because of this, uh, mostly from uh, probably for helping me to, to, to really understand what service means. And looking back, uh, I, I get a little scared of how close I came not to doing it. You know, standing, even after I had the two sticks of gum, I wasn't going to give it to them. Be 30 kids and they hadn't had it for months, you're going to have bloody noses. I didn't want violence, you know. But then that little voice said, you'll never see him again. Halverson has seen them again. In fact, he's returned to Berlin over 20 times since his days as a pilot during the airlift. The German children, now adults with children and grandchildren of their own, haven't forgotten the candy bomber. One of the Berliners came through, 60 years old, just the 26th. It was, it was about in, in, the, in the 26th of June this year came through, he was 60 years old. And when people got away where he could talk to me privately, he, he said, I was 10 years old during the blockade. I was going to school one morning. The weather was terrible, the fog was on the ground. And all of a sudden now the cloud came in a parachute and landed at my feet with a Hershey chocolate bar, a fresh chocolate bar from America. I was astounded, he said, I was so surprised. It took me a week to eat that piece by piece. And, and he said, but it wasn't the chocolate, what it was was hope. Just as a Hershey bar once represented hope to the children of Berlin, Halverson has come to represent hope to all of us who still want to believe that one person can make a difference. It's just one thing after another in an organization that's heard about this concept and heard about uh, what's happened as a result of it and, and uh, the, the whole idea of, uh, of initiative of, of proactive in, in your work at home or wherever else, of, of thinking through of that hope that external somewhere out there, that uh, there's some power greater than yours that can amplify whatever your building might be. The one-time farm boy from Garland, Utah, has a full planner of trips, speaking engagements, and appearances until the year 2000. Documentaries, German, uh, Canadian, American documentaries on the airlift with in-depth coverage of the, the operation of the candy bars. Uh, next month, uh, that parade down Fifth Avenue in New York with the veterans. Uh, uh, discussion later on in New York with the, the care packages and their impact uh, for the people during the blockade. Uh, Minneapolis, and yet next month in uh, Washington, D.C. and St. Louis all in one month, uh, and the next six months. We've got some, uh, one, one appointment for year, February and year 2000. Over the years, Halverson has met with military and political leaders from around the world. Thinking back, here I was a sugar beet kid, clod buster, and here we are talking to, to, to Prince Philip. Uh, uh, President Truman, and uh, not President Truman, well, after the airlift, I met President Truman in Washington. Um, when we were on a mission in England in 1986 and 87, they had the uh, 850th birthday of Berlin. And the Berliners said, we want to, Alton and myself to come to Berlin and participate in that. Well, we're on a mission. So they went to church headquarters and got permission for us quickly to, to fly over to, to Berlin. And, and, and President Reagan met us by the old airplane, an old airplane that I'd flown into Berlin when I was the commander there for two sticks of gum for four years. I was Commander Temple off 70 to 74. In May, Halverson put on the old flying suit and fired up a refurbished C-54 Skymaster to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the airlift with a transatlantic trip from New York to Berlin. One of the biggest thrills I've had in the 50 years since that airlift is to fly this kind of airplane back to Berlin again for the 50th anniversary left New York on the 5th of May, 1998, to Labrador, 
across the North Atlantic to Iceland, and Iceland, across the rest of the North Atlantic to Scotland. And the airplane did pretty well, but we had some interesting moments along the way. The 53-year-old C-54 almost lost an engine over the freezing waters near Iceland. The plane's wings iced up, forcing Halverson and his crew to descend to 1,000 feet where it was warm enough to melt the ice, but plenty cold inside the plane where the heater didn't work. And it was cold. It was frigid. And, we could, and the floor ventilation actually couldn't turn them all the way off. So with no heat, and they're still getting some air circulated from the outside, and this was early May, and it was cold. So we had to get blankets out of the back, put over our heads, wrapped around our legs to keep, keep, keep enough warmth to, to feel comfortable in the cockpit. Well, it wasn't totally comfortable. In the back end, the guys had blankets all the time because the heater in the rear end didn't work anyway. Despite the problems, the long plane ride was well worth it. Well, coming back to Berlin, the feeling was fantastic in the first time in this is C, uh, airlift C-54, we came in over the bombed out buildings, the old approach. There's still a runway there, a secondary runway, shorter, but we came over the bombed out buildings just like we did before. Brought back the memories. I can still see the kids' faces and hands in the air as we came over the first time after I signaled to them. And there were children in the area, just in the playground though, not looking for food from the sky. And as we landed, there was a huge crowd to meet us, of mostly newspaper people, but also old Berliners. Although Halverson has returned to Berlin many times over the years, his return for the 50th anniversary of the airlift was special. I've been back to Berlin 22 times since the airlift, but this time, this summer, 1998, was the most uh, emotional for me because of the Berliner's emotion. Sighting the airplane over the city again, against the skyline, reminded them of the days when they didn't have enough to eat. And that, that airplane, watching it come with dried eggs, dried potatoes, dried dice carrots, and it brought it back to them, just like flying this thing after so many years, brought it back the feeling, that same feeling. Thousands from the United States and Europe have flocked to see Halverson and the Flying Museum, the Spirit of Freedom, during his summer tour. He delivered the first Berlin airlift stamp, met with President Clinton and German leaders in Berlin, but most importantly, rekindled the fire of freedom that inspired the original airlift and changed a young Utah boy's life. Uh, looking back over 50 years, I'm really happy how life turned out. And I think it turned out because uh, we're in a position of serving someone. And that's the, the basis for fulfillment and happiness in life, a uh, life of service. And I learned that from this experience of Berlin. Flying that 53-year-old airplane back in, in my 50-year-old flying suit, the flying suit that I flew during the airlift is what I have on right now. And looking back over that period, very happy and thrilled with how life has been. Try and pay back some of that and uh, trying to remember the lessons I've learned in my everyday life so I don't ever forget the contrast and how well we have our life today.